Well, hello, friends and lovers, new and seasoned listeners of the bookcast, people who may have just heard of me or have known me for a long time. Hi, how are you? Um, I've had this little podcast for about four years now, and uh, I took a bitty break because fourth quarter at work because I was writing a book, because election season, because it's October, seasonal affective disorder, hashtag self-care. I needed a little bit of a break, and so I stepped away for a mo, but I'm back. Today won't be a full-fledged episode, because if I stop to plan everything out and script out the episode, I just will not do it, because I don't really feel like doing all that. But I did want to pop in super quick with good news, a little bit of a review of the month. I think it's been about a month-ish since I posted an episode. I was actually not too worried about it. I'm here when I'm here. I'm not when I'm not. But... I did want to, like, stick my toe back up in this podcast thing. I'll try to have a full episode up next week now that things are a little bit more settled for me, but I did want to, like, catch up. So we'll do a super quick episode this week, full episode next week, but the best news is that I hit Words Complete on calculated risk last night late last night I actually did the final chapter and then I was like let me just roll around in these ideas for an epilogue and so I kind of pounded out the epilogue super quick I'm gonna let it rest for a mo for a bit and then go in with like my carving knife and just slice away the fat um pump up my sentences, beautify the writing, get rid of some repetition. Um, There's a lot of times like when I'm writing, I just need to get it on the page. I can edit it once it's on the page. So I edit, so I, I write it. I let it sit, let it marinate, let it like get all up in my senses. And then I go back once I've had a little bit of distance and I'm able to pull all of the, I love this, oh my God, all of that emotion out of the project. And then I like go in and I'm just vicious with the editing knife. And then I send it over to my illustrious editor, Editor Kai. And then she tells me where I done messed up at. (laughs) It makes it so I don't look stupid out in these streets. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very, very excited. I ended up at about 40,000 words. My limit is 45,000. This is a project that's going to be part of a group project in 2025, which I'm hype, hype, hyped about. I'm very excited. I wish I could release this like the second it's done, but I can't. But it's good. I really, really like it. So I hope that you all will enjoy it. I'm going to pull up the blurb that's sort of, um, it's a work in progress. So this will likely change, but this is the idea that I had for it. I put up a little uh, teaser. It's really um, like the first part of chapter one where you get to meet Imani. Imani Thatcher is my heroine. I'll do another tease on Tuesday where you get to meet Desmond, my hero, and um, I'm just going to start slowly rolling out the, the um, I guess, all the details, all the information, working on the blurb. I'm not going to release my cover quite yet because I don't know when I can release that. Um, it's weird. It's weird not being in control. I don't, I don't like it, but I'm also really hoping that I have... Um, a wider reach uh, being part of this group project. So uh, fingers crossed for me, but I will let you guys know if I have any opportunity to do advanced reader copies or giveaways or anything like that. But here's my blurb. It's a work in progress. Imani's world is turned upside down when her lover suddenly dies and she discovers he had been married the entire time they were together. Reeling from the deception, she attends his funeral looking for closure, only to be confronted by Julian's widow. Imani realizes she barely knew the man she thought she loved. Looking to pick up the pieces, Imani reluctantly agrees to teach financial literacy at a youth center as part of a work requirement. 
There, she meets the ruggedly handsome director, Desmond, whose steely guard of his past intrigues her immediately. Despite their very different backgrounds, Imani and Desmond share an undeniable connection. But Desmond remains wary, still haunted by the injustices of his past. As their feelings grow, Imani helps Desmond heal old wounds. He introduces Imani to his world, and she shows him that grace can come from forgiveness. However, just when the future looks bright, outside forces threaten all they've built. Will the risks they took on lead I'm sorry, will the risks they took on love lead to healing or more heartbreak? So I did put up a little teaser Tuesday on my Substack. It's authordlwhite.substack.com. I believe it is the main post on the page, but it's very easy to find if you land on the page and don't see it. If you are interested, um, that post is up. I'm super excited for people to get to know Imani and Desmond. Also linked in there is my Pinterest board for calculated risks. So you can see who my inspirations are, who I'm looking at when I'm writing Desmond, who I'm looking at when I'm writing Imani. Super, super excited about this book and I am happy to be done. I don't know how long it took me to write it about. Um, I'm going to open up Dabble and see if it will tell me when I started writing it. Um, more than 30 days, I believe, because I think I started like early September. Um, I can't really tell, but it's been Six to eight weeks, I would say, which is for like a short-ish project where I don't have to do a lot of research. That's about average. Um, I am in the document right now just looking at it, just just looking at it. I know my fellow writers understand <laughs> understand um, where I'm coming from. I just like, I, I, I'm going to be at the Snellville Book Festival on November 9th. If you are a local, come see me, bring book money and your hugging arms. I will be there 10 to 3. But I ordered some books to sell. And I just like, I'm just sitting here looking at this big old box of books, just looking at them. Just, just looking at them. I have some books that are on my nightstand, my books on my nightstand. And I just, I just be looking at them. Like I understand how my mom is so proud of me because I'm so proud of me. Anyhow, so the book is done. Fourth quarter is fourth quartering at work. Like fourth quarter is rough in our world. Uh, so we are kind of just diving in. There's just a lot of meetings, a lot of offsite meetings, not for me, but for the people that I need to set meetings with. And so I'm literally squeezing a 30 minute meeting in between like business plan reviews and site visits and, you know, all these meetings that have to happen. Um, so it's stress, stress, but Things are looking okay, rolling into November. Um, I went to vote last weekend. We have early voting here in Georgia. It opened October 14th, and I voted the weekend, so like the 19th or something like that. Very excited to have that behind me, and now I can like chill. Um, so we just are just going to chill and wait for the numbers to roll in. We are optimistic cautiously, um, hoping for the best, but you know, what happens happens. Um, we still, we rise, you know, no matter what happens, we shall overcome, but we're hoping for the best situation, which is for me and my house, my family, my life, my friends, the life that I live is a democratic white house and a democratic Congress. So, Fingers crossed, everybody. I hope that you have had the opportunity to vote if it's open. And if it is not, you have made a plan to go to vote on election day. Make sure your loved ones have an opportunity to vote. Make sure that people in your community that may need assistance getting to the polls, make sure they can get there. So super, super excited. I live with a person who is um, immune challenged. Um, and so we're talking about if she's going to go vote. Are you going to go vote in person? Are you going to 
Um, you know, what are you, what are you, um, are you going on? Election day, you know, she can't be standing for hours on end. And um, I heard it said that lines haven't been long in years. I, I don't know that I believe that because Cobb County be having some long, long lines. But um, yeah, so voting is done. Work is good. The book is done. And I have been reading. I haven't been reporting on my reading. Um, I'm not going to review all my reads, but I am super excited about Glocktober this year. I'm excited about Glocktober. I don't think my reads this year have been as interesting as they have been in previous years, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm still trying to make it do what it do. Um, I am at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reads. And then there's um, there's an Amazon collection called Busy Bodies. And I think there's six books in that collection. They're like short, like hour, hour and a half listens. So I just counted them all as one, uh, which brings me to let me look at my total for the year. I am at 169 books read in um in 2024 um my goal is 200 i'm five books ahead right now i have currently three books in progress really only one book in progress but i got two books um on the back end that are are coming up uh for me to listen to so I'm going to be busy through the end of October um, and these books are going to close out my Glocktober reads. I'm currently reading Heaven Sent, Cordoba Agency number six by my good friend and yours, Delaney Diamond. The Cordoba series is probably my favorite series from her. It's, it's assassins. It's um, like handsome, sweaty, swarthy heroes and one assassinette. No, what lady assassin. Um, I love me a lady assassin. Um, so the latest in that series is out. I'm like 30% in. It's so good so far. And then I have uh, coming up Beyond Reasonable Doubt by Robert Dugoni, who I discovered last year and blew through all of his books. So good. And then uh, What Have You Done by Sherry Lapina or La Pena, however you want to pronounce it. Um, that just popped up on Libby and I was like, let me go ahead and grab that because I can count it for Glocktober. Uh, so those will round out my Glocktober reads. I'll actually um, let me look at the ones that I have read. Missing White Woman by Kelly Garrett. Really enjoyed that. Melinda Lee, track her down. I'm a Melinda Lee stan. Surprisingly, I have really enjoyed a James Patterson novel, but I, I'm chalking this up to actually the um, the co-writer, like, I think his name is David Ellis. Um, what was this book? Uh, Lies He Told Me. I can't remember what it was about, honestly. Uh, so much has been going on, but I do know that I enjoyed it. And then the Busy Bodies series, uh, namely One Lucky Subscriber by Kelly Garrett, really wanted to read that. But I enjoyed um, all of these books in this collection. And then I got into a little Mia Hopkins series about um, ex-cons who just got out of jail. And when you read Calculated Risk, you will understand why I'm all up in this ex-con business. Um Thirsty and Trashed by Mia Hopkins is uh, books one and two in a three book series about three brothers who incarcerated and they get out of prison and their struggles with reentry, etc. and so on. Pretty darn good. I'm actually thinking about picking up the third book, which I said I wasn't going to do, but I can't stop thinking about them. So I think... I think I'm going to have to go ahead and get it. Um, and then Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. I read this very early in October. I don't remember what it was about. I would remember if I looked at the blurb, but like just looking at the cover, I don't know. I'd be reading, I'd, I'd be reading a lot of stuff. So that gives me, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you count all the busybodies as a... Uh, as one book. Uh, I just didn't want it to take over my whole challenge. So I just counted them all as one. So Glocktober will be full and then we're moving into nonfiction November and I have some good reads picked out to 
talk about for not to talk about but to read for November I don't even know how I'm gonna, I think I have like 22 books on my list and a lot of them are like um like like scandally um investigative reportery which I really enjoy I'm like I've been talking to uh, one of my uh, a director at work and he just he's just reading these books about I don't know like a world war ii and he's like oh this is really good I'm like no it's not that is not good. I'm like, that's not the kind of nonfiction I'd be reading. Well, um, he he just he loves like a like, you know like a revolutionary war uh, book, uh, uh, something about World War Two, something about Germany. What? Oh, sir, please go away. Please get away from me with that. But we did have a riveting conversation about the Menendez brothers and how those dudes are about to get out. Um, on parole and let me just tell you I was alive when that case I watched that case happen and um I am not in agreement with those dudes getting out on parole like it my opinion doesn't matter clearly what's going to happen is going to happen but I am looking at people who were not alive <laughs> When this case went down, feeling sorry for these men, if you were a lot like these murders were gruesome and like way, way past. I, I just listen, don't get me started. Don't get me started. But I have not watched the Menendez brothers, um, that movie that's on like a fictionalized uh depiction of their story i watched the trial i read the transcripts um yeah anyway there's that there's um susan smith who's trying to get out on parole and i just i just want y'all to know she is not safe out here she needs to stay in jail her and yolanda saldivar not safe anyway what am i talking about i am on a podcast about books and writing so I did a little bit of catch up, um, talked about Glocktober, talked about calculated risk and how it's done. And it's Sunday morning. I just made coffee and I have some bagel minis that I toasted. I've got my my 40 ounces of water sitting right here. I am ready for a restful and relaxing Sunday. I'm going to finish um, Delaney Diamond's um, Heaven Sent, the Cordoba Agency number six. I'm 30% in. Got to get it in. I don't know if I'm going to do that Mia Hopkins book today. I'm thinking about it, but I like I might just snatch it up and like listen to it at work this week. And then I have that Robert Dugoni I want to start because I did have an arc for that, but I was waiting for the audio, so I do need to listen to it and get it reviewed for NetGalley. Um, I think I'm ready to get off this mic and get my Sunday started. So I thank you so much for joining me for this brief uh, catch up after my intermission can't promise I'll be back every week, but uh, I am trying to get back in the habit because I do really enjoy doing the podcast. I love talking to you all, but like the habits that I have set up to be prepared for this podcast were just wearing me out. Just, it was just wearing me out. And so I took a bitty break, but now I'm back and um, fingers crossed for a full episode next weekend. We'll talk about all the books I read in October. We'll talk about, um, books that might be upcoming. Um, I currently do not have any in mind. Like I, like I always have like tickler files, but we'll see. We'll see what's coming in 2025. I do, I do, I do want to do a little holiday short. Um, newsflash to my editor. <laughs> Last year, I shoved Home for the Holidays in her face in like mid-December and I said, hey, um, could you, <laughs> could you do a quick edit for me? And she's like, oh, send it to me. <laughs> so we did two rounds of editing in about two weeks. And, um, thankfully that is a shorter project and it wasn't a difficult one, but, um, I'm going to try not to do that to her this year, but I do want to do 
I do want to do a holiday short. And then I'm also turning my head toward 2025. It'll be my 10-year anniversary as an author. I've got a special edition of my debut novel on my mind. And so I'm kind of getting ready for that. As I mentioned, I'll be at the Snellville Book Festival November 9th. If you are local, come see me. I'll be here. I will have the Potter Lake series. And then I got a few copies of The Neverlist, a few copies of rubies and a few copies of dinner at sam's um i don't really have time to get anything else but if you desperately desperately need a print copy of something that i might not have please send me a message um dm me on social media if we're following each other author dl at books by dlwhite.com if uh, you need to shoot me an email um, there's a contact form on my website you have to dig for it because people people be spamming me i don't i don't i don't like it being easy to find but Shout me out a holler if there is a print edition of a book that you desperately need and you will be in Snellville, Georgia on November 9th. I will find a way to get it to you, sign it, and put it in your hot little hands. That will do it for me. Thank you so much for joining me for today's podcast. Um, I don't know what number podcast is. I think this is episode 99. So booksbydlwhite.com slash bookcast slash 99 is where you can find this episode and also where you can leave your comments and messages of love. You can also find this podcast on my Substack. It's authordlwhite.substack.com. I'll make it easy to find. Uh, I will see y'all on the socials. Have a wonderful, blessed, fantastic week. Happy Halloween. We'll talk again next week. Ciao.